Okay, so I'm ready to start. I'm going to use cheap paper today, just playing on the, the gel press, the gel plate, sorry. Start with something wild. And very little of it, get it spread out all the way. I'm just doing some backgrounds today for what I'm going to want to print over. Press some stamps in. Get some background texture. Stamp off to the side to get most of it off so I can stamp one once with it. Now, I'm going to pull it up just a little bit with some deli paper, just a little bit, not the whole thing. See, just to get, and I will print over that. Just to get that layered a little dry. And I'll probably put some more texture on it. I got this that came with some packaging. It does a wonderful job. Alright, now I'm going to go over that with the blue. Very little. I think I might put some gray on the top. Just something different. Very lightly. This is just for backgrounds. I'll be doing things over this later. I think I'll hit that with a few bubbles. Got this large bubble wrap. Oh, I love it. And this side's all popped and it makes this unique, weird thing. And I think I'm going to pull that with some of my cheap dollar store paper. But it makes lovely backgrounds for your journals and for regular collage on canvas. I use it for that. Alright, so that came out really, really interesting. I never use these colors, so I decided to pull them out. I actually kind of like that. So we're going to leave that one as is. And let's pull out another color. Let's put a red in here. Never leave well enough alone. See if we can get any of that other layer under it. Hopefully we can. This red doesn't spread very well, but okay. I'll go back with those stamps. Especially here where it didn't spread very well. I'm gonna disperse some of it. That took all the red off. I don't have to hate that. Okay, so let's pull this one. It's interesting. Hopefully enough will be left behind to do something else interesting with it. These are colors I put in the front because I just don't use these. I don't use this red very often. I usually use a dark red. Get out of my comfort zone. I'd rather like that. But I'll be putting things over it later in another video, so I'm going to put that to the side. Let's do the blue over what we got left of the red on here. Oop, blue too much. Uh, can make it work. This is not a blue I use very often either. I'll give you the colors in a second here. Ah! We have... Ultramarine. This is citrus green, I think it's called. It's paint on it, you can't really see it. This is the brilliant red. They're Artist Loft or Master Touch. 
I just use the basic acryl. This is Liquitex Blue Gray, which I just bought. That's pretty interesting. Do some bubbles. See what I mean about that side where they popped? What an interesting pattern that is. Try not to ruin it with this. But I really like that pattern. Let's see if any of that red is left on here. I really would like it if it was, but if it's not, eh, it's not, it's going to be pretty darn boring. Well, it's not that boring. But see how interesting that pattern is where those bubbles are popped? It actually looks like a fish. I was thinking of getting one and popping all the bubbles because that would really that would be a nice overall pattern where the bubbles are still there you get look like little seashells i might put something on that one or i might just pull this up all together let's see pull it up on the tissue complete the tissue page oh that really is nice that gray goes lovely with that citrus Oh my goodness, that's pretty. And there's a slight, I don't know if you can see it, there's a slight touch of red right here. I really like that one. It came out nice. We'll put that in the done pile, well, the done line. I don't want to pile them up or they'll all stick together. Okay, so what are we going to do now? I don't have anything else in the front that I don't usually use. And I'm, I'm reaching for the stuff I always use. I need to stop that. Well, I don't usually use purple very much. So let's see what we can do with purple. On the end, this is um, violet. Red on the top. So I like that red. I haven't used it. Ah, I have to take some of that off. Yeah, and that's an old red that I haven't used very much. I did use it when I was doing paint pouring, but I haven't used it since then. Let's see what it does when you mix it with a purple. I'll get a mess over here. I'll clean up with a piece of yellow paper off my palette over here and then Use that belly paper for something else. Put that up there for the to be used. Still too much on here. Let's start with putting this down. This is a piece of, actually this is a piece of homemade paper that I got at the art supply store years ago. And it has been used for everything. This is the only piece I have left of it and I got a huge sheet of it. So Now let's put some down the good section on the bottom. Maybe that will give it some interest. And then on the top, I'm just going to do some swipes across the top, and maybe a little on the bottom. Maybe this side, and a little bit right there. Okay, now that looks pretty interesting. I'm liking those colors. We'll see. I put a bird feeder outside the window here and haven't seen a one. The bird feeder that's on the other window where I used to work, there's a bird sitting there now. Oh, well, that's interesting. Look at that. It's got some good stuff. So that's stuff I don't like. But I think if I put another color over the top, let's pull up a little bit more of the purple. And then maybe another color, something totally different over the top. Ah, I want to do white, but I have nickel azo gold, and that's for me. That's always the right, great choice. Don't know why. That I have to say my favorite. I go through a few of that a month.
you know, we still need to do something to this. And what we're going to do, I have these paper doilies that I've had forever. And they're so pretty, I wanted, I wanted to use them just as they were. But I never did. And they're very delicate, unfortunately. You can't use them many times. that one right there to dry on a piece of plastic. All right, now that looks interesting. And then let's put some stripes up here. And let's do this on its own sheet. Let's see what we got. So these are all going to be background for probably a journal. piece of something on there. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Like I said. This is quinacridone. Nickel azo gold is always right. It always works with everything I've ever done. That's very pretty. I might like this. I don't like up there. Very nice. Now I might take this, which I like, and add to it, see if I can clean my plate with it. Not that I worry about starting with a clean plate, but it doesn't hurt. Oh, now that did add another layer of interest. Look at that. Wow, I like that. I use a lot of tissue, so this more likely that I'm going to use it. Let's do something wild. Let's start with the purple. Let's go to the red. Just need a tab. Don't need a ton. Let's go to the blue. Well, let's go to the green. Most of it's going to be... Ah! Didn't need that much. Don't mind taking it off with my finger. I'll right, start down here. That red does not spread worth a darn. And then blue. And then the green. I think this brayer is about to break. It has a pin in it that falls out all the time. And it sounds like it's about to do that. Too. Now I'm going to pull up a little bit of it with this. Just a little bit. Just to get a little less on there. It's just kind of too much. Just kind of a lot of too much on there. Okay, what do I have up here? I always bring out like a small amount of things to use. I have a big box of stencils. I have a box of stamps, especially homemade ones because I use a lot of my own stuff. I, I like it better because then mine doesn't look like anyone else's. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this page right here with what I just did. To dry that up a little and... Now when I stamp over this paper, it's going to be far more interesting. Okay, I like this. I'm just going to do this by itself. Uh, I might need a little something. How about some circle interest? And by doing this, it's bringing that color up there. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Got some good backgrounds. A couple that I probably could add something to right now. All right, that's a nice, busy background, but I like it. And when I do the next video, you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing over the top of these with black, so it's not going to hurt that they're bright like this. Now let's get that first red one 
give it some pizzazz. Much better. And is there anything else that needs pizzazz? I can see if I can pick up that what's left of the purple with this one. Probably not because it looks pretty dry. Well, it picked up a little of it. So, now I want to do I'm going to do another one with this bubble wrap and pull it up with white. So let's do purple and red with very little. Roll off this awful color that I've already used. Oh, I'm not going to roll off on there, is it? This is the violet. I am going to put a dash of red over the top of it, but I'm going to try and do it a different way. So this red is just not working for me. Let's try the red that I normally use. And I do need more of that. It's kind of gloppy too. I'm wondering if getting caught in the and that cold snap we had, I left all my stuff in the studio. It doesn't have heat if I'm not in it, so I'm wondering if it had an effect on my... Now, what I'm going to do is this gloppy thing here. Put it down. So I can pull up a buttload of it. I use this one to try and get this in. There we go. Oh, that's gone pretty. It's just not something I'll probably think about to use. I'm going to use half of this to get on the edge. Now that's fairly dry. I'm pretty sure it's fairly dry. I'm going to pull off a lot of it. And then we're going to top it with white. This will probably be pinkish because I got this red on my roll. But what I'm looking for is like a old plaster look. See, since I'm only going to use parts of these things, uh, how about this one? Let's pierce up where. Oh, it's boring. All right, so I have those all done. We're going to pull this one, and then I should have enough backgrounds for my next project, which I will show you in another video. I just want simple backgrounds, but... Ooh, that's pretty. That's very pretty. And let's pull up the rest of it on the tissue. Or better yet, let's not. Pull it half and halves to the stuff that I have. Now by putting that off white, it makes it kind of, as you can see, this one's not as vibrant. It's kind of pulls it in the background and that's what I'm looking for, a background. So that really works. So this, we're done. Don't even have to clean this because, well, it's clean. Okay, I want to thank you for watching this. Stay tuned for 
let's go through these one by one. This is the last one. I'll show you what we got. I don't know if you can see them very well. This is the tissue one, which has a lot of junk on it, but it's interesting. This one I will use the next time to pull something else on it. So I put it in the to be printed over pile. Now this is a background we're going to use. It's very nice. I like that one. This one came out lovely. That's going to be very useful. I think that one's my favorite so far. This one is nice. It's a little more muted now. I might not have should have done that, but I like it. This one's very red, so I'm, I'm going to be working with black over them, so it's not going to be that bad, but it's very red. And it's a red I don't usually use. Oh, this one's pretty. There's some nice stuff on there. This will make a very nice background, especially like for a face coming up here. I don't know if I'm going to use the faces, but we'll see. This one is a little too busy for me, but I mean, I don't, I think it's too vibrant for a background, but it'll work. And then we have the blue one that never got very much done to it. I should, probably should have put some red or something in this one, but I'm, I'll am i put it in the pile to be printed over and it'll be used. But these are the ones I'm going to use in the next video. These are going to be backgrounds, collage backgrounds that I will probably later put in a journal. You know how it goes. You may, you may not. But they're very pretty. I really like what happened to them. I want to thank you for viewing my video and if you're interested in what I'm going to do with these which is always the big thing I mean you can make gel prints I mean I could gel print every day all day for 10 years and not worry about it but in the end you got to do something with them gel printing is the most fun part for me but this to me there's got to be an end to the art it's got to it's got to go into something so that's what we'll do the next time we will put these into something. So thank you for watching. And hopefully it was, this is my first YouTube video. Hopefully it was interesting enough for you to watch and see what happens to these pages. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.